I'm continuing my series today on why I am a Christian. On the authority of the Word of God, I'm stepping out in the field of archaeology today. Now, archaeology is quite a science, and actually it's quite exciting as you look back into the past and dig up the past and see civilizations of the past. For instance, Indiana Jones was based, he was an archaeologist. It was based on the idea of archaeology and discovering the lost ark of the covenant. And you've got King Solomon's mines and so forth. I believe that the Indiana Jones movie will be reintroduced by Disney in the next couple of years. Very fascinating to find out what these civilizations, these ancient cities, ancient cultures were like in the past. But I suppose it all began in the modern era with Napoleon when he invaded Egypt. He invaded Egypt with 54,000 men, 400 ships. Now his invasion wasn't very successful, but his scientific expedition was. They discovered the Rosetta Stone and many archaeological facts about Egypt, such as the pyramids, the Valley of the Kings and so forth. But then you come down to the uh, 19th century and modern archaeology basically started around this time of history. Flinders Petrie was a name I think of, and then there was William Ramsey, a famous archaeologist, who actually was from Scotland originally in England. And William Ramsey was a scholar. He achieved three degrees, I believe, and about 12 honorary degrees from different universities. But he went into the Middle East and then he went into ancient Asia, which is now Turkey and Greece. And he wanted to write a history of this time that the book of Luke and the book of Acts prefigured. They talked about this. Luke talked about this. So he went into Asia and he couldn't find many maps because you're talking about after 100 years after the first century, there were no maps that were really viable about the countries and the cities and places that he could find. So he took as his road map the Bible and the book of Luke particularly and the Apostle Paul's writings. And he traced these countries and cities. He actually traced 32 countries, 54 cities and nine islands from reading the book of Acts. Isn't that amazing? And he found these things to be accurate. And he basically said during his life and near the end of his life that Luke was the first among historians, among the greatest historians of history. And uh, Dr. Luke, who traveled the roads with Paul on Roman beaches and the Roman roads, he explained that Paul, he felt, was very reliable and Luke was very reliable in his accurate depiction of what Paul did. And then, of course, we come to many of the cities that were discovered. And in the last 150, 170, 180 years, many cities have been uncovered. Nineveh, Babylon, Egypt, Chorazin, Capernaum, where Jesus spent a lot of his ministry, Jerusalem, Caesarea. So what are some of the things that were discovered there? Well, they found, the critics said that Pilate, Pontius Pilate, who was supposed to be the governor that ordered the death of Jesus Christ at the crucifixion, never existed until they found an inscription about two foot by three foot, about 12 inches thick, in Caesarea in an ancient theatre there with his name printed on this inscription, Pontius Pilate, the governor of Judea. Isn't that amazing? Then they found, of course, they found this wonderful theatre in Ephesus, 25,000 seat theatre, or we could call it a stadium today. And that's mentioned in the book of Acts where Paul was in a riot there. And these people had dedicated this temple to Diana of Ephesus, their so-called goddess. We see this as a confirmation of the scripture. It's mentioned there. Then also an inscription from Pottery up in Dan, a northern city of Israel, has been discovered recently in 1993, demonstrating that David, the house of David, it had written on this inscription, this was an actual fact. So going against the critics again. Then, of course, perhaps the greatest discovery of modern times was the Dead Sea Scrolls. When a young boy looking for a lost goat, 
at the backside of the desert in the Dead Sea, threw this rock into a cave, and the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in 1947. Every book of the Old Testament it covered, except for one Esther. And it's an amazing discovery. They found the book of Isaiah almost word for word for the Isaiah we have in the King James Version today. Tremendous confirmation of Scripture. And then, actually, we have found about 60 personalities in the Old Testament and we've found that they are reliably recorded there either through archaeology or through historical documents. And in the New Testament, we find about 20 characters, and I'm sure they'll discover more, who are actually depicted by the Bible, either through archaeological discovery or historical documents. Isn't that amazing? So why am I telling you all this? Why am I saying this about archaeology? Because it confirms my faith in the Bible. And the Bible talks about Jesus. There's an old song that goes like this. Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. And the story of Jesus is what the Bible tells. Talks about Jesus coming from afar, from a world afar, from the New Jerusalem, God's city, and coming to this earth born as a baby, growing up, having a three-year ministry, working miracles, healing people, raising the dead, and preaching what he called the gospel that he would die and rise again from the dead. This wonderful gospel, this wonderful news that gives you and me the hope of eternal life if we believe in Jesus today. If you're a skeptic, I challenge you to look into archaeology, how it confirms our faith in the Bible. If you're a Christian, I challenge you to increase your faith and spend more time studying these things that help bolster your faith in the scriptures won't you do that today won't you uh, allow jesus to come into your heart by faith follow him get into a church where christ is preached and love him and serve him for the rest of your life i invite you to do that today